And welcome back to part four, hopefully the last part in the Unity UT61E multimeter series. In part three, we made sure that this meter does still work, that it still gets accurate measurements, and that appears to be the case. So we can now move on to repairing this. On part two, in the comments, people suggested that I install an external pull-up resistor so that I don't have to manually short that one pin of the processor out to ground manually all the time. They said maybe the internal pull-up resistor of the IC of the processor is blown, as that would cause that behavior, that would actually cause the IC itself to output those minus two point something volts that we were always measuring and that I could not get rid of no matter what I did. I first want to do some more tests. I have these two red wires hooked up. These are serving to short out FC1 to ground in case you want to. And if I now turn on this thing, as you can see, we are in the resistance mode. If we want to get voltages, we got to short it out. And there we have voltages. Same goes for millivolts. Now, the question is, what happens if we just leave this shorted out in all the other modes? So we got millivolts. If I now switch over to resistance, this should not be shorted out. Let's see what happens. It just turns off. Same goes for capacitance, same goes for frequency, only in the microamp range. Of course, we do need this to be shorted out, because if we remove the short, we're back with the resistance mode. So that's how it should be. And then in the amp mode, where we don't need the short, the meter turns off again if we do short this. So it seems like this short cannot be permanent. The pull-up resistor, the external pull-up resistor, I did some research online and I read values, you know, something between 5 kilo ohms and 50 kilo ohms, and I put on a 10 kilo ohm resistor just to try this and it did not work. So instead I put on a potentiometer, like the one I have right here, and we're just going to adjust a value at which, in one of the faulty modes, or the, the, the meter switches over. So if I turn this, as you can see, below a certain value, this is going to switch over. So I'm now going to adjust as precisely as I can the point at which it switches over. There it is. Now we're going to uh, measure the value of the potentiometer and it's going to be low. <laughs> I tell you that. Get ready. 24 ohms. So that is a very low value. Certainly not the kind of thing that you'd expect. But, with the 24 ohms, so you can see the milliamp mode works, but do all the other modes work? Yes, amp works, milliamp works, microamp works, hertz works, frequency, for some reason it wants to restart. So it may not be quite right, but it does work. Resistance works, millivolts works, volts works. So I will have to find a resistor of around 24 ohms to make this thing work again. Attempt number one, a 22 ohm resistor and a pair of 1N4004 silicon diodes. I took a look at the datasheet of the original dual diode package and there are no special requirements regarding the forward voltage, it's just a standard 0.6 volt drop, so 
you don't even have to use the short key diodes. The problem with this setup, however, is the case does not fit together anymore, so I'll have to change that. But if we now try out the meter, you can see we got volts when we were supposed to have volts, millivolts, resistance, capacitance, frequency, it has to restart for that for some reason, microamps, milliamps, and amperes. For some reason, yet again, it has to restart for that. But it does do what it's supposed to do, and we don't have to short out anything anymore. Attempt number two looks quite a bit more messy. I went back to the Schottky diodes. These are type BA42, because these are smaller. The resistor remains the same, 22 ohms, and I got it all arranged so that it does not get into a conflict with the battery compartment. So I can now put this thing back together. And finally, the meter is back together and ready to go. I'm not going to repeat the function test that I did in part three of this series. Just a quick look. If we select voltage, we do get voltage. And if I go and shorn out my probes, as you can see, the little offset that we've just seen, it almost goes away. In the previous take, it was actually all z Yeah, there we go, all zero. So that's fine, I'd say. The overload situation in the millivolt range actually appears to be RF interference that this meter gets from the outside. Uh, if I don't touch any of this, which, well, of course, now it doesn't work, but uh, let's see if we can get this. Now, of course, it's not going to do it now that we're on camera. Oh, well, but if I short this out, you can see it goes all the way down to zero millivolts. That's what it's supposed to do. When it's in circuit, it should be working fine. Got the resistance mode once again. I can... Uh, Yep, that is the resistance of the test leads right there, so that's working. We got the capacitance mode. That works. We've already proven that. If I short the leads in this mode, it just goes into overload. For some reason, it then does a reset. The frequency mode does work. I still have the function generator going up here, and as you can see, we still have almost a kilohertz in frequency on there. The microamp range, I cannot test that, but it does seem to work. And the offset that we had previously is also gone, even with open leads. Once again, does a reset and then we have amps. So I'd say it works. Now, what is the consequence of adding that resistor? Well, it is a very small value resistor, so, uh, I hope that it's not going to further damage the processor over time. What I do think it's going to do is it's going to shorten the battery life. Thank you for watching. Once again, if you have any more helpful suggestions, please leave me a comment or send me an email.